Hi everyone, I'm Simon from Homesite, and today we're looking in alternative to the to the behemoth of the WS28 12s, the 13s, the 15s, and we are using some very, very simple and cheap addressable LEDs. Let's go. So if you're new to the world of LEDs, they are everywhere. If you look on any of the Home Assistant type forums, then you will see people with examples around this time of year. Now, unfortunately, the WS28 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, they seem to be the giant, the one. they are the ones to have. They're great, I've got a bunch of them myself. However, they are quite expensive, especially if you scale up to a very large installation. Now, I've come across some of these addressable LEDs and you see them on Christmas trees and they look great. They're powered by USB, they're really simple. However, we obviously want to be able to integrate them into something like our Home Assistant. Now, if you haven't heard of WLED, it's a really simple and great bit of software that you can run on something like a Wemos D1 Mini or a Node MCU. It gives you fantastic control is very very integratable into home assistant however these very simple leds don't typically come with the wemos d1 mini and wleds unless you found something proprietary now this is the type of led that i'm talking about this is a 20 meter reel that i've got here and now today i'm going to get this working with home assistant through wled and a wemos d1 mini Hopefully you really enjoy this video, hopefully you like it, subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram. So here we go, here is our USB string light dream colour LED light. Hmm. Okay, some odd translation there, but you can see it's got app controls, USB connector, it's showing as RGB and you can see there's some pretty cool effects shown on the box itself anyway. So let's get it open and have a look. So you can see it comes with this remote control straight away. So we're going to use that in a minute just to test them out, see what they do. Um, but hopefully we're not going to use that. Eventually we're going to integrate it in with our WLED. Now there seem pretty light with instructions and that seems to be it. So let's get rid of the box. So some instructions on how to use, but let's be honest, we're not going to read those. We're just going to plug it in and see what it does. So it's in this nice sort of full wrap as often the WS2812s and the, and the like are as well. So here we can see it's got this sort of waterproof sort of molded LED with a fairly short LED um, USB lead, but certainly long enough if you're, you were going to use it natively. Obviously we're hoping to chop that bit out, or I certainly am hoping to chop that bit out and use it in with some other controller. Just undo all of these little tie wraps. I'm just going to put one back on just to keep it tidy. And plug it into my USB power source. And instantly we have life. So that looks pretty cool. They're nice and bright. Obviously my camera's dimmed down a little bit to, uh, to compensate, but they are quite bright. They look quite good. Just trying out the remote control, see if we can get some control over it. Seemingly I am struggling, but as with all of these things, it helps if you pull out the little tab. There we go. And now we can oh, make it red or orange and green, blue, of course, as you would expect. Now I'm hoping to get it back to some sort of level of control with the to demonstrate the individually addressable nature of these LEDs but I am struggling a little bit now I will confess as I said this is the first time I've unboxed them and I haven't read the instructions so I'm sure if I read them it would all become clear so I'm going to keep pressing buttons until it does something Okay, so there's some buttons on the little controller itself as well. If I hit, seem to hit M, it seems to jump back to this. Now I'm just unwinding a little bit here just to see if I can see some sort of pattern. Um, like the WS2811s on the strips, um, they come in sort of batches of three. Um, so that's their sort of finest level of granularity in, in LED in th groups of three. Now I was just wondering if there was something similar with these, um, if they are grouped together in some way, or if every sort of 
third LED is always red or, you know, where every third LED is, is all changes together or anything like that, some sort of pattern. But there doesn't appear to be one. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, so hopefully we can get all of these wired up. We can count the LEDs if we must and configure that into WLED and get some, uh, get some pretty cool patterns going on. There seems to be a nice transition as well, a nice fade between the colours. Seems to be fairly smooth, fairly nice. Now, for the life of me, I'm really struggling looking at it on the desk to see if each colour um, changes individually. So you might need to spread it out a bit further, um, but it's certainly worth a go for me anyway. So, so far, it's good enough for me. I think that they are going to be individually addressable. Now, often with these types of LEDs, they're hard coded with the address rather than the like something like the WS2812 or WS2813s, the, which are individually addressable. However, they'll increment up from one all the way through to however number you want to get to. And you can daisy chain multiple chains together. I think that these are going to be hard coded. So the first LED is going to be number one, which means that it's going to be less flexible than others. So if you were to try and join multiples of these strings together, I think you'd get some slightly odd effects, i.e. both of the number ones would act at the same time. However, this is a really cheap way of doing it, I hope. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Wemos D1 Mini and I'm going to program that with WLED. I'm not going to show it on this video because I'm just trying to demonstrate these LEDs themselves, but I hopefully will do a very quick video very shortly on that. Incidentally, you could also do this on something like a Node MCU, which are my two sort of go-to circuit boards, either a Wemos D1 Mini or a, or a Node MCU, and there'll be links, of course, below for both of those. So now I'm gonna, we have to figure out which wires are which on this three wire LED circuit. So you can see here, there is a bit of insulation um, shrink wrapped over the three bare connectors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a small pair of wire snips and expose those connectors before I then measure the, the wires against each other to try and find which is the plus, which is the minus, and therefore which is the data. Now it might be a little bit um, confusing, um, I guess, if you're not used to this sort of thing, but I'll try and talk you through it as best I can. Now, of course, your connections might be a bit different to this. They might have a connector or something like that, so you might have to chop the wires and strip them back. Um, but I would say that you definitely want to try and test it while it's live. Now, obviously, there is an element of risk to that, not in terms of your health, um, because it's very, very low voltage. Um, but I would um, certainly try and keep them separate while you're testing them. But because you, you could, if you could short them, you could damage some of the components. So I'm just picking off here, finally, some of the remaining plastic while I separate them. And these are fairly stiff wires, fairly moldable. So if, once they're in position, they're not sort of trying to come back together. Now with some more flexible wire, they can sort of try and connect back together again. So just be careful. Um, maybe put them into a um, into a connection block where you can then get exposed connectors so you can then get your, uh, your, your multimeter on there. So a little word of caution as well. I'm going to should bring my multimeter on here. I've actually got the plus and the minus leads the wrong way around. And so when I mark them up, plus is minus and minus is plus. Um, but just make sure your multimeter is connected up right because it took me a minute to figure that out. So I'm, as you can see, I've now got the power back on. I've got my multimeter. I'm going to put it into volts DC measuring up to 20. And I'm just going to measure between all of the bare wires, as you can see, have been um, shown here. So first of all, I'm getting 0 0.8. This one I'm getting two. Now with USB, I'll be expecting something between four and a half to five. See this one, I'm getting 4.7, and it should be constant. Um, it shouldn't be varying really um, for your uh, for certainly for your plus and minus wires. So that one's getting 0.8. Between these two, I'm getting 3.8. So I'm guess that that one of those is the data pin. But those two, I'm fairly certain, those bottom two is getting 4.69, 4.7, depending on how well I make that connection. 
Um, and I'm, so I'm pretty certain that that's my plus, my uh, my positive and my negative, and that top wire is the is the data feed. Now again, it will be, might be different for yours, of course, and there's no way, really way of differentiating between these. So I'm going to get a bit of tape and just write on there on each one. So here's a little setup I've got with the Node MCU. It's plugged in, it's pre-flashed with WLED, and I've got two ping pong balls with individual WS2812 LEDs connected. Now, if you haven't seen the software, here's a real quick look at it. So uh, you can change the level here. You can see there's mo I've got multiple instances here, so I've got a couple of Node MCUs in the same way. You can go in, you can choose the color from the color palette, and you can see on these ping pong balls that the, the, the LED with inside it is changing color. So you can obviously select colors from the color wheel. You can click on the effects button at the bottom and choose lots of different effects. Now, if I bring up my trusty multimeter again, we can test the voltages just coming straight from the from the board itself, which is obviously only being fed from the USB. So it's fairly limited in terms of its amperage or it's the, the power that it can produce. So the number of the brightness across the number of LEDs that it can produce. And we can see if I hold it in the right place, that we're getting 4.8 volts. Now remember, I've got my wires the wrong way around on my multimeter, so the black and the red are reverse. So this is actually it's 4.8 rather than minus 4.8. So if you look on the on the Wemos D1 Mini that I'm using here, you can see actually that it does tell you which is the plus five and which is the ground anyway, and which is your data pin. Now I'm going to disconnect the LEDs that I've got on inside the ping pong balls from the Wemos D1 mini board just by disconnecting the header and I'm going to connect the I'm going to solder the new LEDs directly onto the header pins now you just want to make sure there's a little bit of solder on both the header pins and onto the onto the wires themselves so that you can make a good connection now if you haven't done any soldering before now's the time to start Go and get on online on YouTube and check out how to solder. And I'm sure there's hundreds of videos on there. Now, the other thing I'm going to mention now is I'm going to use some tape to hold the board down to my table um, where I'm filming this. Normally, I'd have put it in a vice where it's sort of nice and easy and flexible to, uh, to, to move into the right position. So here you can see I am soldering, just pre-soldering onto the header pins. I've already tinned the wires themselves. Now, just word of warning, um, the wires themselves, because they have very, very little insulation, they can get really hot really quick. Um, so I tend to use a pair of um, pliers or needle nose, needle nose pliers here. So it only needs a tiny amount of solder, especially for a little test bent, which is like this. And here you go, and that's why I tape it down now, because it keeps firing off and annoying me. So that first pin was my positive, this is my negative, or my ground. And the last one is my data pin. So now obviously the pins are very close together, so make sure there is either a piece of insulation between them, or that they're not touching and not going, not possible to touch each other. So I'm just going to have a quick look at this, and make sure there's a little bit of a stray wire poking out there, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a snip there. Now, I was attempting to put a bit of insulation in there as well, but actually, I'm just going to uh, not bother with that. I'm just going to bend the pin slightly. Okay, so I'm happy and ready to connect. And there we go. We can see it's gone green. Well, some of them have gone green. So if I clear off this stuff here and bring back my phone and the WLED app, you can see I can change the color to blue or red well it's red on the app green on the led so there's obviously some issue there and uh, if i go to config you know you can see only some of these leds are lit up if i go to the configuration and led preferences you can see the led total count at the moment is set at 30 so only light up the first 30 leds just change that to 300 and press save and that's now lighting them all up now obviously green is red and red is green at the moment. Blue is clearly blue. Now I can come to effects and you can see that I can start to do some of these cool effects, which is pretty cool. I think that's a success. So 
so you can select two colors for the effect so i've got well green and, and blue at the moment so you can see it's doing a transition between those now in the led preferences you could change the type um, now I don't know which one of these it would actually be if I'm totally honest so you could try and select a few of those at random um, and see if that sorts out the profile alternatively you could go into the config So here's some of the alternatively you could go back into the config and actually if you look to the right and now I have this set up as a WS2812 as you can see here or WS28 something hmm. now if you leave this as a 28 something you can change it from GRB to RGB hit save and you can see the LEDs have instantly gone red which is what I've got selected on my color wheel and I can go to red or to blue or to green or of course anywhere in the middle and I can now go to the effects and it should do what we expect it to do now the there's hundreds of effects on here and they all do different things you can change the intensity if you hit peak at the top you should be able to see what it's doing you see the little bar right at the top on my phone that's showing what it should look like and we've got a sort of an idea that it is doing something like that with the, those selected colors Halloween's always a good one. Fantastic, massive success, really pleased with it. Now the last thing that I'm going to do off of this video is have a play with the selection or the uh, changing around of the different LEDs because I think the address is hard-coded, like I said before. Um, I want to see if I can mix them in with some WS2812s or see what I can do, just have a little play with those. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this has either inspired you to go out and get some some LEDs or maybe if you've got some already, you've been able to modify them and follow this step-by-step -step process to get them working. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Simon from Homesite and I'll see you next time.